Oh, hey. Hi. Hello there. It's me again. Or maybe it's me for the first time if you're new here. In that case, welcome. You have just popped your Nadia Bokhari channel cherry. Did that feel good? Today, I'm going to be sharing with you seven really quick, easy ways that you can start having better sex. Everything on this list is research backed and super effective. If you do any of these things, not only will you have better quality sex, but you're also way more likely to be having more sex because when we have sex that feels really good, we want more of that. And having bad or just boring sex, by the way, is way more common than you think because no one teaches us how to have great sex. No one teaches us what that looks like. And we certainly don't learn about the myriad powerful ways that people with vulvas can experience pleasure. So I'm going to enlighten you on all of that today, starting with tip number one. So there's actually no touching whatsoever in this tip, but let me tell you, it is going to ramp things up in the bedroom and it's going to make you more likely to get to the bedroom if you do this. Sexing is truly one of the most underrated ways to heat things up in your relationship. And that's because it stokes the fire of desire when you and your partner are apart so that when you come together, you're already going to be looking at each other through the eyes of desire. What tends to happen with people in long-term relationships is they start to text exclusively for practical purposes. We send texts to tell our partner to pick up some milk on the way home from work or that we're stuck in traffic so we're going to be running late tonight. And we stop using this powerful form of communication to flirt, which the majority of us do very easily and without a lot of thought in the early stages of a relationship and in dating. Female sexual arousal doesn't tend to be reactive like it is for men. It's mainly contextual. And what that means is all the factors leading up to and surrounding physical intimacy impact whether or not we want to get it on at all. So if we spend the day having very mundane interactions with our partner and then our partner wants to get it on that evening, it can feel a little disjointed and it can be quite difficult for us to change our mindset and really get into that sexy frame of mind. But if we've already been in a sexy frame of mind all day, then that's much easier. If you're not sure how to sext, by the way, here's a quick tip. Simply recount in graphic detail the last time you guys had hot physical intimacy. Even if it's been months or years since that happened, you can still recount it. Talk about how amazing they looked and smelled and break it up like it's chapters to a novel that you can send to them throughout the day. Also, let them know how great they looked when you left for work this morning. Soft lighting has been shown to reduce our cortisol levels, which are our stress hormones. And this is really critical when it comes to sex, especially for people with vulvas because of the contextual nature of arousal. So if we are already in a stressed kind of state, then we're less likely to want to get it on. And even if we are getting it on, we're not going to be fully into it. So switching off the lights and lighting some candles can be a really good way to help reduce those stress levels. And it also just creates a really sexy romantic mood. On top of that, it helps to reintroduce some novelty into your relationship. And novelty is something else that's really important for women and people with vulvas. We actually require a lot more of it in a relationship than men do in order to maintain sexual interest in our partners. And this has been shown through research. So if we feel like we're always doing it in the exact same environment, under the same lighting, in the same conditions, at the same time of day, roughly, we can get bored. And so even changing one simple thing can create that little bit of excitement in your relationship. The longer a couple have been together, the less they tend to engage in deep, passionate, extended kissing. In fact, you might find in your own relationship that you can go days or even weeks without this. And the only kissing that you do is very much a fleeting kiss on the lips or the cheek as your partner is leaving for work for the day. And kissing is incredibly important. Just think about how horny you were when you were a teenager and you used to make out for like what felt like hours. And it was literally all you would do and it was so much fun and you would get so turned on. There's a reason for that. Kissing releases oxytocin 
oxytocin, which is a bonding hormone and it's a feel-good hormone. So the more passionate, extended kissing we engage in with our partners, the closer we feel to them and the hotter we feel for them. Some studies have suggested that a six to seven kiss is the sweet spot for getting that hormone pumping. So give it a go. Start doing it at least once a day, every day, and definitely do it more when you're getting it on. Ideally, you want to be doing a ton of it during foreplay before any clothes have come off at all. And you're going to find that your partner is going to be way more turned on. And when we are way more turned on, when we get down to business, everything feels more comfortable and more pleasurable. This is another one that tends to fizzle out in long-term relationships. And yet it has such a powerful impact on our sense of feeling desired and feeling desire for our partners. Often when we're first dating someone, we will be basically locking eyes with them nonstop. But after we've been together for a while and we're married or living together, we can forget to hold our partner gaze and we might look at them throughout the day when we're passing one another's paths or when we're having a conversation but we're not truly having that intense gaze that we had in those beginning stages when we were so hot for each other. Not only is having more extended eye contact just throughout the day and in your relationship in general going to be a good thing in terms of making you feel desired and feeling desire for your partner and like you're really seeing each other but it can massively turn up the heat in the bedroom. In fact I would argue that there are a few things that feel more forbidden and more erotic than intense eye contact while you were doing it. Most of us are actually, ironically, more comfortable taking our clothes off with someone else and getting it on with them than we are looking that person dead in the eye. Which is why holding your partner's gaze while you're getting it on is an incredibly vulnerable, intimacy-promoting act that's going to make the two of you feel so much closer while you're doing it and it's going to feel so hot because it's not a thing that couples normally do. Unfortunately, the heteronormative model of sex has taught us to focus on all the wrong things. It very much teaches us that P in V is the gold standard of physical intimacy, that that is how pleasure occurs. When in fact, research shows that for the majority of people with vulvas, that is not how reliable climax occurs. Most women require their bean to be stimulated. And by bean, I think you all know what I mean. I'm trying to avoid censored words here on YouTube so they don't keep demonetizing me. But most women require their bean to be stimulated to get to climax. And this is because it's home to an estimated eight thousand nerve endings. So it's incredibly sensitive and has the power to deliver life-changing pleasure. And this should actually be a relief to men who partner with women because it takes the pressure off you to constantly perform and be rock hard at all times, which isn't realistic because it's totally possible and also normal for you to sometimes feel excited, but for your body not to respond in the way you perhaps want it to. And that's one of many reasons we need to switch this narrative up and look at physical intimacy as something much broader than simply this. Especially because the orgasm gap study shows that out of any group, it's lesbians who get women to the big O most often. And ironically, straight men who do it the least. And I want to reiterate, this isn't your fault because you weren't taught another way of doing it. But consider the fact that lesbians don't have the thing that you have been told is most important for sex and the thing that you have been told is most important for getting your partner to the finish line. And we are actually getting our partners to the finish line statistically more often. That's because we use these and our fingers have a lot more sensitivity and dexterity. So ability to hit all of the right spots. And if you want to know exactly how you can use your fingers to deliver some next level pleasure, I'm going to link above a video I did on the hook technique, which let me tell you, it is going to it's going to change her life. When you finish using this one, she is going to be like, what did you just do to me? And how soon can you do it again? There is no cookie cutter for pleasure. What one person might find intensely enjoyable, another person might find downright boring. And one person's idea of gentle is another person's idea of too hard. The only way you can find out what your partner specifically likes is to use your mouth. Not in that way. I mean, definitely use it in that way, but that's not the way I'm talking about right now. And it doesn't have to be confronting or awkward. You can totally do this in a sexy way. Each time you try something new, simply ask them, how is this pressure? How is this speed? 
Do you want me to go harder? Do you want me to slow down? A partner who knows how to communicate and demonstrates that they have a vested interest in finding out exactly what you are into and making sure you are as comfortable as possible while they are doing it is the sexiest partner you can possibly have and you can't convince me otherwise. Although we still don't really talk about this topic a lot as a culture, a lack of physical intimacy or just lower quality intimacy, intimacy that feels boring, unsatisfying or even like a chore is a red flag because it's always indicative of something else that's going on in the relationship. When we are having great physical intimacy, as a general rule, our relationships also tend to be great. And when our physical intimacy is bad, our relationship is also bad. A lack of physical intimacy is one of the most common reasons cited for divorce. We know from research that people that are having regular, satisfying physical intimacy experience higher confidence levels, are more productive in the workplace, are happier in their relationships, and can even live longer. If you want more tips on how to have better quality sex and you want to dive deeper into this and work with me one-on-one -on -one and learn some skills that I can very confidently promise you are going to give you life long satisfaction. You can book a completely free call with me today by hitting the link under this video. Spots are obviously limited because I only have so many hours in the day, so I can't guarantee how much longer I will be offering this for. You won't just be working on improving what's happening in the bedroom. You'll also be improving what's happening in your relationship as a whole, and you'll feel more bonded to your partner than ever before. I hope you got some good tips out of this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if any of them helped you out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the notification bell and then YouTube will notify you when my videos are going live. I will see you all in the next video. Love you. Mwah.